Hi all, and welcome back to The Neighborhood. We're looking at the Rad Zero from Ross and Audio today, thanks to the Honest Audiophile, who sent his personal set into the channel for a review. I quite like the looks of these, but do they sound as good as they look? Let's get into it. So this may be a bit of a spoiler, but the Ross and Audio Rad Zero has been a favorite of mine in the marketplace since it came onto the scene and I got to hear it at Can Jam in I think 2019. I was lucky enough to hear a set there and I thought these were poised to take the market by storm. And they surely have. But this is not a perfect headphone and also has its critics for a number of reasons, which we'll talk about. Let's start with the build. Overall, I'd categorize the build as hefty, unique, and rather rugged. The headband appears to be made of a piece of spring steel wrapped in their leather-free material with a soft cushion on the bottom. The yokes are made of thick pieces of metal that adjust by sliding up and down in and out of their dense plastic housings that are affixed to the ends of the headband. The ankle pads are soft and plush with a large circular opening. The inside and the outside of the pad are comprised of their leather-free material again, but the portion that touches the face feels like a suede material, although their promotional information describes it as a soft fabric interface. In any case, aided by the yoke swivel, I think they'll fit most people's ears and be genuinely comfortable for all. But the cups of the Rad Zero are the star of the show, each composed of a unique resin swirl, resulting in each set being a one of a kind, which is likely why they all are assigned a number upon completion of production. The colorway of the model that I have here is a black and blue metallic composition with a boy racer kind of vibe to it. Topping off the face of each cup is a black metal grill styled with the Ross and Audio signature pattern. If you want to customize your Rad Zero further, you can purchase additional colored grills for a cool $300 off Ross and Audio's website. Inside each open back cup is a large 66 mm planar magnetic transducer. To provide power to each of these transducers, the base of each cup has a hole for the 3.5 mm connectors of the stock cable, and according to the Honest Audio file, standard 3.5 mm headphone cables won't work properly with the Rad Zero, as it is wired in a peculiar and non-standard manner. The stock cable terminates in a quarter inch gold plated connection and the cable itself reminds me of the cable that came with the Hi-Fi-Man Aria Stealth, but this one is more appropriate in its length and much easier to work with in the long term. Dave also sent me a balance cable produced to spec for the Rad Zero by Corpse Audio, which I also utilized in the course of this review. But honestly, I don't think the Rad Zero really benefited from a balance connection off my amplification in particular but your mileage may vary. I mostly tested the Rad Zero primarily using the Gold Note DS10+, Plus, the Fio R7, the Bravo Audio Ocean, the THX AAA789, and the new reference amplifier to the test bench, the Tron Antares. Out of these amplifiers, I prefer the sound of the Rad Zero most when powered off the Antares or the Bravo Audio Ocean, and found that it was more well-rounded in tone when ran single-ended with the stock cable. Specifically, with the Gold Note, it was a little bit too much of a good thing, and the presentation was a little bit too soft and too warm. THX amplification was good, but was a bit too thin and overly sterile at times. The Tron just sounded like music personified. It's a high current Class A design, which was simply excellent in terms of a match for the Rad Zero but the surprise of the pack was how good it sounded off the ocean. The little bit of tube magic from the Raytheon 12AU7, which I had installed, gave these life, lift, and energy, which improved enjoyability. To say a few more important words about the fit and the build, while I initially find this headphone comfortable to wear for some time, it is a heavy beast weighing in at 653 grams a bit more than the 615 grams maximum reported on the website. 
The way the pad under the headband fits my noggin also creates a hot spot after some time. And furthermore, the pads do get hot on the face with extended wear as well. And I know other owners of the Rad Zero have found these fit issues to be problems for them too. At the very least, I think that I'd have to exercise my neck frequently if these were to become my daily driver. And honestly, its weight may be a deal breaker for some. It's as heavy as some of the older Odyssey's cans, and this makes sense as Alex Rawson co-founded that company and served as its CEO for some time when heavier headphones were in production by Odyssey's. I'll also note that from a casual look at the Rad Zero, I'm sure many might see other design similarities between it and earlier Odyssey's cans. While I first listened to the Rad Zero back in 2019, my first take was these were perhaps the best Odysseys at the time. Although the LCDX has always had, and continues to have, a certain place in my heart. As I've always had a love affair with that headphone. Perhaps one of those can be sent into the channel for review one day. But let's get back into the Rad Zero and talk about its sound. The Rad Zero offers a non-offensive sound with detail and resolution that is at least suggestive of its price point. With that said, each note that the Rad Zero produces is somewhat rounded and smoothed over to a certain extent. Timbre is warm and it is defined by a slightly mellow character. I hesitate to call it dark, but it's definitely leaning in that direction. Each note observed is lush, thick, and can be more diffuse than pinpoint at times. Regarding the sound profile of the Rawson, it begins with its bass that is somewhat limited in its dynamics and focuses more on its sub bass to drive its sound forward than anything else. The bass was best on higher current amplification, but the word fluffy comes to mind when trying to come up with a good description of the Rad Zero's bass. It does bleed into the mids to a certain extent, but does not go overboard creating a warmth and body rather than a bloat. The mid-range reminds me of a warm electric piano. You know, like the ones that jam bands use. There's a certain euphonic quality to it, but the Rad Zero still has enough definition to cut or push through the mix on occasion. It's dense, rich, and full-bodied, yet clear and direct in its delivery. The treble feels somewhat rolled in order to please the ear. Anyone with a treble sensitivity would likely be pleased with the Rad Zero. Both air and treble extension are limited. It's a smooth operator, though. Detailed enough, but not forceful in its presentation to the ear. No information appears to be missing, but it possesses a certain soft character in its delivery. Harshness, sibilance, and an overly forward sound is devoid from any portion of the Rad Zero's frequency response. The soundstage isn't huge, but it's decently above average, and when powered off sophisticated amplification, like the Tron Antares, note depth and image depth was really good. Notes were more defined and had greater separation with scale. Despite its warm timbre and somewhat brick-walled presentation, instrument distinctiveness was easy to discern. Vocals aren't super forward, but generally lay atop the rest of the mix. But female vocalists could be more forward sounding compared to their male counterparts on certain tracks. The best open back headphones that I have to compare to the Rad Zero in-house are likely to be the Meze Empyrean and the Aria Stealth. The presentation of the Aria Stealth is a bit more intimate and less forceful sounding compared to the Rawson. The Rad Zero is a warmer can and the Aria comes across as more neutral to the ear. The Rad Zero emphasizes its low end more while the Aria Stealth feels more balanced and has a better extended top end in comparison. Still, the note weight of the Rawson is better and best the Aria Stealth in that regard. The Rawson is more like the American muscle car, while the Aria Stealth performs more like a Porsche. When powered properly, the Empyrean edges out the Rad Zero with regard to resolve and clarity, and also sounds a bit more balanced overall, less warmed over by its low end compared to the Rawson. Still, portions of the later mid-range of the Rad Zero are better represented, and as a result, the Empyrean sounds a bit more scooped out in its upper mid-range in comparison. Even so, the later treble seems to persist longer in the frequency response of the Empyrean, so the Empyrean appears to have a more global range to my ear. 
again, it also feels less forced. In general, I prefer the ceiling performance of the Empyrean when its source chain is well matched for it, but the Rad Zero is less source picky compared to the Empyrean, and as a result, may exhibit more consistent performance across devices. In summary, the Rad Zero are big, thick, and heavy boys with a big, thick, and heavy sound. I would suggest not leaning into this type of sound signature too much in the system that is running them, but I did enjoy them thoroughly with genres of music that benefited from this, such as heavy metal. For example, I've been enjoying Metallica's new album, and I've also been taking a walk down memory lane with this band as well by going through all their classic albums too. The Rad Zero have been awesome for this. Overall, it's a capable headphone with a unique build and a special sound. If a colorway ever speaks to my heart and soul, I might be tempted to pick one up. But at $2,600, it has to be the right one. Thanks to Dave, the honest audiophile, for sending the Rad Zero in for a review and supporting this channel. There will be a link to his review of the Rad Zero and his channel in the description below. You can support the neighborhood here though by making sure that you've subscribed, that you've liked this video, and consider turning on notifications to get notified when I upload future content. You can also leave a comment as I love to interact. Furthermore, I can be followed on Twitter, Instagram, www.intuitreviews.com, or you can become a Patreon. All links to these neighborhood access locations will also be provided in the description below too. And as always, thanks for watching, and I appreciate all the support. And I'm out for now.